Welcome to Nano 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here are not found anywhere else on YouTube. While the Gripen was being developed, there was a lot of interest for high angle of attack performance. Since air-to-air -air combat seems to end up like a classic dogfight in many occasions, energy and speed decreased and high angle of attack ensued. Many early supersonic fighters had a tendency to stall out of the sky when entering this region of the flight envelope, to the dismay of the pilots as recovery was often difficult if not impossible. The Vegan had a rather benign high angle of attack characteristics, thanks to the canard layout, something different from some uh, contemporary half-tail foreign fighters. It tended to bleed a lot of energy, like every Delta, uh, high angle of attack, but it was relatively safe for the pilot. So this was also an important element in favor of the grip and canard layout. In the Gripen specification, the spin recovery capability was explicitly mentioned as an important requisite, supplemented by a spin prevention system that had to prevent a departure to happen. Basically, it had to be a belt and braces approach. Spin recovery depends heavily from the various elements of the plane not casting an aerodynamic shadow on the control surfaces, particularly on the vertical rudder. This issue can be tested in vertical wind tunnels at an early stage, making sure that the design fits with the requirement. The weapon configuration obviously was tested and the actual test on the prototypes confirmed the good behavior. The spin prevention system was built into the flight control system because, well, it seemed the logical thing to do since it was already controlling all the aspects of the flight. Everything seemed fine till the 8th of August 1993. A production but not yet in service Gripen crashed during a low speed maneuver during an air show in Stockholm. The investigation concluded that the plane had been a victim of a pilot-induced oscillations, something that also caused the loss of the first prototype four years before, and it appeared to have been resolved. Yo and roll stability at high angle of attack is strongly dependent on canard incidents, and the investigation concluded that the plane became unstable with canard deflection in the region of minus 10 to minus 25 degrees. The fix was to adopt small positive values of canard deflection. Quite a radical change. This turned out to be beneficial as it meant that the trailing edge surfaces were positive, that is, rear and down, thus giving more positive lift. But now it was realized that in some conditions a physical geometrical limitation to the elevons might be encountered which could cause loss of control. A low-speed wind tunnel program was immediately set up, and for the first time the large low-speed wind tunnel electrical fans that normally were used only to provide discrete incident changes to, well, to simplify the operations were now deflected continuously during the test run. So after the test they came to a non-software fix. It was a pair of small strakes behind the canal surfaces. And this step of vortex generator serving the purpose of directional and lateral stability enhancement at high angles of attack is not uncommon on fighters. The Eurofighter and the Mirage 2000, for example, have them. Also, a new canal trim control law could now be introduced to eliminate the risk of the control surfaces hitting the end of their travel. However, this test surfaced another potential issue, the aerodynamic hysteresis of the wing plus canards combination. Hysteresis is a phenomenon affecting many different physical systems. It means that the state of a system might depend from how the system is changing. 
In this specific case, it means that if I am increasing the angle of attack, the wing will stall at a limit angle, but the flow will reattach at a lower angle if I am decreasing. Its best public known practical application may well be the spectacular aerobatic display performed by the test pilot uh, Viktor Pugachev in a Sukhoi Su-27 known as the Cobra. The presence of a hysteresis was actually expected, but it turned out to be particularly dangerous in post-stall and stall recovery conditions. The flow did not reattach easily, and it did so in an asymmetric and shaky way, so the recovery might have been quite difficult if not assisted. So a large part of the testing campaign was dedicated to developing appropriate control laws and trimming the plane controls to make the recovery easy and intuitive for the pilot. And since then, finally, no further problems have been reported. If you like this video, I'm sure you will like also the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please uh, like, dislike, hit, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And please, if you can, consider supporting the channel on Patreon and Subscribestar because that would be amazing. In the meanwhile, stay safe, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.